Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 10 of The Monsters, the ASP Net Monsters Weekly. This is episode number 10, and the production code for this episode is HH, both lowercases, lowercase h, lowercase h. And episode 10, that's not to be confused with the hexadecimal notation for 16. This is just a decimal uh, one zero, so that's all it is. Today we're going to be looking at configuration in ASP.NET. Uh, we've done this before, but we're going to look at it from a little bit of a different angle today and look at what would it would take to get some settings pulled in from the database. So, uh, Dave, uh, you've worked with applications before. Do you? What kinds of things would we be looking at? Like, I mean, we've got the things that we can put on the web server. We've got the, the kinds of things that go into a normal configuration file. We might, in today's world of uh, MVC core, we might be putting those into config.json or, or something similar like that. But today, or app settings.json, which is the default, what are other kinds of things that we might want to put that's more transient that might need to be updated more often in the database? Well, I guess for, for storing these settings in the database, I picture more the settings where you have an application administrator. So a super user of your application, something that they might change on a regular basis. So one of the things that we had talked about was the idea of maybe a today's promo or this week's promo. That might be something that's uh, stored in the database as a setting. Awesome. Okay, so there's a few things to consider. There's there's more complex um, scenarios that you might want to try and incorporate and you might actually have a series of configuration tables and those kinds of things but at some point we're going to need to distill this down to a configuration value uh, some kind of um, key value pair that can be used throughout the site so we're going to start here I've just got a simple setting that I've implemented in my home controller you can see I've, I'm pulling out the configuration the site title from the config and right now this is pulled from app settings.json so I'll just scroll into app settings.json uh, we'll double check that guy and inside of here I've just added to the normal app settings.json file a site title where it says the monsters when I run this guy We'll just give it a second to run, build starting, and all of that wonderful goodness. We're going to see the basically the the default project come up, and it's going to actually say. Uh, and in the background here, I've actually I th I believe the database might actually be I, I don't remember my code path that I've got set up. So the database might be building. So this first one takes a little bit longer to run, but here's the value that we've got. This is actually from the app settings.json. It says the monsters, and we can verify that just by going here, and we can see that we're adding a JSON file, appsetting.json, and then we're setting up configuration um, by calling builder.build. .build. So any of our configuration builders, and, and we can create our own, they're going to basically invoke this guy right here, builder.build. .build. Now to follow that value through, I'm pulling it out of the configuration, just storing it in a view bag. And, and I'll talk about this just for a quick second here, but I'm, I'm gonna go to the view really quickly. Inside my view, I've got home, and I've got the index, and we can anticipate that we would here see a uh, heading somewhere. Visual Studio is fighting me. I believe it's in here somewhere where we call. Oh heck, you know I might have even put it into the. I'm just gonna call it in the in. layout, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe it's in the layout. Maybe it's in the layout. Where did I put that guy? There it is. Uh, there Which we one? go. Perfect. Thank you. This is why we pair program. Okay, so we've got the viewbag.site title in there, and away we go, and we can see that, indeed, it's showing up right here. So the, what I was talking about before about having these key value pairs, that's effectively, effectively what we get out of the app settings. And in this case, it's just site title, and it's the monsters. If you add some hierarchy, then it would actually be, rather than just site title monsters, it would be um, logging log level default, and then you'd be able to read that default setting out of... Um, out of the config and there's you, it's just separated by colons and you can store that however you want to you can structure that however you want to either here or in the database in in my case though what I'm what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just trying to keep it a little bit simple for the purpose of viewing it inside um, uh, in this demo and just to try to keep it short so what I've uh, done is I've just actually wor I'm working off of the sample from the ASP.NET doc site actually and what they've got here is a configuration value and it's just an ID and a value so just a key value pair is kind of the idea and this is going to be what we actually save in the database so uh, I can look at these here I've got a configuration context which just has a set of values it's a DB set of configuration value 
And I've got this configuration value class, which we've already seen, an ID and a value. And then the third piece is an EF configuration provider. So there's a little bit here that's going on. First of all, this, this first piece is just an extension method, and this follows the convention that you're going to see throughout a lot of uh, different types of services and middleware and these this idea of adding something to what's already being there as part of the different chains, be it configuration or be it, um, you know, even the MVC pipeline itself gets added via the, these similar types of configuration builders or similar, similar types of um, extension methods. In this particular case, we're actually extending iConfiguration Builder and now we can add the EF configuration provider, which we're going to create here below. So down below here, uh, we've got an uh, EF configuration provider, which inherits from configuration pro provider. We accept the um, an action for DB context options builder, uh, a type here that we've uh, you know we've we uh, we were exposing uh, as well in internally. Um, we can we're going to use this down below just a second here. So we take this options action and we're going to invoke this and pass in the builder. So we've got a configuration context, we've got a DB context options builder. We start putting all these things together and then we invoke this by passing our, and pass our builder in. Okay, a couple more things here uh, in, in terms of this one. We've got this, uh, this is the override, this is what we need to expose, this load method. And this is where we're given an opportunity by the framework to add our own values in. Down below is this uh, First of all, it, in, it ensures that the database is created, and then it checks to see if there's any values already e existing in that table, in the values table. So it's just doing an any check, and if not, it's going to create a default set of values for us. So in our case, I'm going to be adding the site title, it's the monsters, and I'm going to be adding current promo, 50% off monster stickers. Um, then finally, I just, uh, because we're in this this uh, flow where nothing existed at, at startup and inside the application, uh, remembering that all of our configuration happens in our startup method. The values weren't there. I've now had an opportunity, the frameworks in, uh, passed me in what I've needed and now I've invoked the, you know, I've participated in that builder chain and I'm just adding these guys to the database and saving them and then finally returning these values. So, um, and looking back up at this code here in the load method, if those values weren't created in the database, we create and save them to the database, and we would return those uh, just from this i dictionary string string. Um, otherwise, we are going to create a dictionary of string string, the key value pairs that's persistent throughout the, the other configuration providers or available through the other configuration providers. Um, with that in place, I'm just going to quickly pop back over to startup.cs and I'm going to take the next guy in the, in the next step in the chain here in this configuration stain, chain. So the first thing that we did was we added the JSON file and now I did call config, I, I called builder.build uh, here. I've added a config file because this app settings.json actually contains the connection string information to the database. So in order for me to load values from the database, I need to know which database to pull from. So this is kind of a neat thing that we can do here if we're working in different environments or if we're out in, in Azure or something and these, these things are loaded in by environment variables, we have an opportunity to partially load some configuration just temporarily and use it in our startup method. And then here I'm, I actually just uh, call in with the default connection string. I um, add the entity framework bits here and then I finally call I'm actually confusing myself. Oh, right, add entity framework. This is the extension method we've created. I apologize. So we go back to our EF configuration provider and we can see here the extension method that we've got. Add entity framework in the entity framework extensions. Okay, we are all set. Hashtag experts. Okay. So um, add entity framework and this is the bits, the, these are the bits that call our extension method, it creates our EF configuration provider and loads our values if they don't exist in the database, they get loaded in by default. And then finally we call builder.build, we set this to be our configuration value that's exposed throughout the site um, as an iConfiguration root. Okay. okay, so now when I run the app, I'll run it again here. And those default values that we had stored, that we put in that provider, um, are going to be added to the database as the database is created. So we should get those new values that we were looking at. Magic. Magic. And this is definitely where the database is being created. 
There we go. It's the monsters. Right on. So we went from the monsters to it's the monsters. And of course, if I go back to my database here and refresh, I can now see I've got this new guy in here. We've got the table that we expect configuration value, which was that DB set that we created. And I can um, edit the top 200 rows. And we can see here right we have these values that we've added. And I can even say uh, we can change this to it's the monsters weekly. And if I go back to Visual Studio and restart the application, the new values will be read in. And I guess I'd have to kill IIS first. Yeah. I think so. We'll just keep pushing F F5 until this works. And all else fails. Oh, Dave, do you know what's happening here? No. What's I, happening? Well, I was, oh, I, and I've, now I'm going to stop myself. I was saying, well, those values already existed, so they're not being added to the database. But I wasn't actually changing the values in the code. I was changing it in the database itself. So it actually should be loading them from the database. But it might just be because the site was already running in IIS. I think it was running, yeah. And this only happens at startup, so. Right, during startup. That would be expected. Now it's definitely starting up. Yeah, and it's there the it Monsters is. Weekly. Monsters there Weekly. we go. Okay, one last, one final thing here. I have another um, settings file in here. And I just want to show, just as a reminder, that the, the settings themselves, as you add them, they can actually overwrite what you've previously added. So we've added the app settings.json. We've added settings from the database. And now I've got this other settings file. And so just to remember that as you know, as you move through, if you're wondering where you're seeing strange values from, you know, it may very well be that you've got settings that are being overwritten down the chain. So now I've got this third instance of this setting, this third value that's coming in, and this will be what's displayed now in when the site starts up. So the last configuration source, that's the one that it's going to grab the settings from. That's the one right. that matters. Right. And it, it, it only overwrites the values that exist in that configuration source. So right. if now that I've got this one, you know, this are, if I were to inspect the value of the, the weekly promo um, thing for the stickers or whatever, that would still be there because the, um, there was no value for it in that new config value that I've got. So here's Rao, it's the monsters, and that is the one from our monster settings right there. Cool. Yeah. So this is neat. What you what you showed us here was an EF provider, but it looks like you could do this from, you could create one of these and get your settings from pretty much anywhere you want, right? Like pretty you're... much. Yeah, exactly. And if you look at the, um, the ASP.NET site under the MVC project for the different types that they already support. They've got like any files and XML. So like you can take from whatever you want to, want to take cool. from. Yeah. And again, you know, you just have to basically pull from, uh, inherit from configuration provider, and then you can wire up your constructor to take that app options action in. That way you'd be able to, in the load override, you'd be able to actually look up that connection string as part of, for to load your configuration context. Very cool. Okay, well, um, that is it for a, a kind of a one simple approach that's, uh, you know, kind of rooted in the docs for uh, ASP.NET Core um, on using configuration from a database. Uh, Dave, uh, for the contest, any winners? No winners yet. Still waiting. Still waiting. Okay, well, next time on the ASP.NET Monsters Weekly, we will see you again. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Cheers.